afternoon, friends. Thank you for joining us. My name is Dan Sugar, founder and CEO of Next Tracker, and I'm really excited to have Brian Martin, founder and CEO of DE Shaw Renewable Investments, here today. Next Tracker is the global leader in solar racking. We have had lead market share on trackers, which are the dominant racking technology for three years in a row now. Last year, we had a 33% global share. We have about 12 gigawatts delivered and a capacity of 175 megawatts a week. We were very fortunate that two years ago, we actually sold our company to Flex. So we're a wholly owned subsidiary of Flex. If you don't know Flex, Flex makes a lot of products. They have roughly 100 factories in 30 countries, $24 billion a year annual revenues, $13 billion balance sheet, and a very positive cash flow. It's an extremely well-run company, and it's an investment-grade company. Desri is a subsidiary of D.E. Shaw, which is a large $40 billion um, financial investor. But Desri is an operating company within that, which currently owns about 2,000 megawatts, predominantly solar. We've been one of the larger renewable energy investors in the U.S., and as the market has moved increasingly towards solar, our portfolios have been increasingly moving towards larger utility-scale solar as the prices have come down within the solar business. Next Tracker has always been out on the forefront of looking at the whole stream of technologies and in figuring out ways to implement and drive those. But there's actually relatively few players that have the balance sheet, the interest, and the ability to drive the ongoing innovation back into existing plants where owners like me actually create most of our return. For me, this is a race about, as quickly as possible, accelerating a transition from fossil to renewables. And that's what's driven our company, our culture, it's our mission, but now how do we take it even further? We've known for a long time, there's opportunity to get a lot more energy out of these systems. What we needed was a smart control system to be able to capture that and get it done. And that's what this true capture is about. Let me take a big step back to the, in the 80s and talk about how trackers work. I'm gonna geek out with you for a minute. So the way trackers worked in the 80s, so the sun would come over the horizon, all the trackers would rotate over all the way. And so if you had, you could imagine a hundred row of trackers right after sunrise, cranked over at 50 or 60 degrees, the first row of trackers would be doing great because they're in full sunrise. But all the 99 rows behind them are in shadow because of the angle of the tracker. Back in 91 with my colleagues at PG&E, we authored a concept called the backtracking idea, which is you really want to be horizontal at sunrise and as the sun comes up, gradually track just so that all the rows are uniformly illuminated until you get to your maximum angle as the sun keeps rising and then track conventionally until an hour or two before sunset. As the sun sets, you gradually go back to horizontal. So that was called backtracking. We introduced that in 91. Everyone started doing the industry and exactly zero has changed in 27 years. <laughs> until we introduce the true capture. Backtracking actually works really well if you have a perfectly flat site that's perfectly sunny and built to perfect construction tolerance. The real world is not perfectly flat and there's a lot of diffuse irradiance out and there are construction variances that happen even with the best contractors. On our system, we use a wireless mesh network. So each tracker, every single row, has a controller in there, an inclinometer, and then a communication device that's the same device that's built in every utility smart meter. So this is like utility grade, robust industrial stuff. So we can monitor how well these systems are doing. Now, the way this works is, this graph we're looking at is a typical day in a typical power plant. And there's two areas that are shown which are on the shoulders. So on the very left and the very right, you'll see an area highlighted by white. And what that is, it shows the incremental benefit for a moderately undulating site. If you're able to control each row individually to really optimize itself relative to its neighbor, how much more energy you can generate. That's based on real data. And in the middle of the day, if a cloud comes over, the way traditional trackers have been operated for the last few decades is they always stay perpendicular to where the sun should be. 
But you can imagine if a big cloud comes over the sky, it's a diffusing element in terms of the irradiance. And so the sun in this case would go from direct normal irradiance, if you looked at the sun through a pipe, to what we call isotropic diffuse, or, or very, very much a diffuser. And in this condition, if you actually rotate the arrays closer to horizontal, you'll see the power of the plant go up very significantly, about 10 to 15 percent in those kinds of conditions. We have over half a dozen utility-scale field trials running around the world. This particular site is D.E. Shaw's 74 megawatt Mississippi project. It has irregular boundaries. It's not one big rectangle. True Capture came on. We've been running it for eight months, and we are getting materially more production adjusted for solar irradiance. If you look at the yellow at the edge of the panels, you can see that they're not all tracked at the exact same angle. Not only do we get more production, 3.5% in this case production, but the diffuse piece actually helps on a lot of our sites. So we're applying this to a lot of different sites, different sensitivity to the undulation versus the diffuse. But what's ending up happening is the independent engineers are now starting to be able to say, yeah, your production is X percent higher if you apply that technology. Now we can take our 30 or 35 years of cash flow, bring that extra spread forward, and actually create current net present value. For an owner like us, that is super valuable. We're working with both the authors of PV Syst, which created a simulation code, as well as First Solar, which has the really nice plant predict model, and working with them to incorporate these post-processing steps so that they can be validated and thought about for the new project. Just being able to look at the data clearly and having that available is what's enabled this technology to really perform and continue improving as we evolve. What is a common denominator with these in the true capture is to have this intelligent system out there that monitors and then collects data through modern control technology and reports on that as we go forward. It's a very robust, which row goes to which angle at which time. It's a very dynamic thing that is not easy to get your arms around. One of the things that's very uncomfortable as an owner is having somebody messing with your system when they're in experimentation phase. And what we found with Next Tracker was just an incredibly open book approach to how these things are working, when they're working, when they're not working, how to tweak it, when to tweak it. And as you can see, 3.5% more energy on a 74 megawatt plant is very meaningful. You know, this is one more reason why when we work with Next Tracker and having a company that thinks about, oh, how do we apply batteries to an existing site? How do we apply new panel changes? What about inverters? It's extremely helpful. And for us, that's a lot of how you create value in this increasingly competitive market over time. It is, to me, a very important sign that the things we're talking about now aren't just about sort of saving polar bears and doing good. This is deeply economic stuff that's rooted into these technologies getting applied to a very large portion of the energy business. I think power is like 40% of all the energy that we use in the U.S. So when you get innovations like this, it's hard to understate the economic impact to the overall economy and the overall system. Now, these sound like small little neat things but they actually are very high impact.